I'm Ilan Goldstein, and you're watching the Scrum Shortcut series. In this video, we will be focusing on sprint planning execution. So now that we've prepared for the sprint and determined the team's sprint capacity, we will go ahead and look at the flow of the actual sprint planning session. The first part of this activity is commonly referred to as the what. In this section of the planning, the product owner presents the next highest priority product backlog items to the development team. This is also the time for the team to ask the product owner specific and potentially detailed questions about the PBIs. As an aside, it's a good idea to use the team's velocity as a rough guide to figure out how many PBIs the product owner should have prepared for this part of the session. The second part of the session is known as the how. In this part of the planning, the development team breaks the PBIs into more granular technical tasks. As they do this, they should also estimate each task to the nearest hour so that they can ascertain when their capacity is full, at which point planning can stop and building can start. As part two can get very technical, it is not expected that the product owner will always stay for this section of the planning, unless of course they would like to. That being said, if they choose not to attend at this stage, then they should at least be contactable in case there are any queries during the task breakdown. Even though velocity-based planning is a good fit to help determine part one, I prefer a technique called commitment-based planning for the deconstructing that occurs in part two to figure out the number of tasks to include in the sprint backlog. So how does it work? Well, we start with the highest priority PBI. Then we break the PBI into tasks with estimates in hours. And finally, we identify any specific task dependencies, rinse and repeat these steps until the development team's collective capacity is full. Now, if the expected number of PBIs presented in part one doesn't match the output from the commitment-based approach in part two, simply call back the product owner to add additional PBIs if there is still capacity, or explain to them why there will be fewer PBIs targeted than initially expected, perhaps due to the uncovering of additional complexity. So how do you define tasks from a PBI? Well, each task needs to be a small slice of the overall PBI. This slice needs to factor in all activities required to meet the task's definition of done. It is my preference that each task should take no longer than eight hours, but the less time the better in my opinion. Now, ideally we'd like to have more than one developer swarming on a single PBI, but typically only one developer or developer pair will work on a task at any point in time. Also, don't forget to add tasks for the sprint review preparation, such as generating demo data if required. In a perfect world, your sprint planning would result in a neat whole number of PBIs that the team anticipates it will complete in the sprint ahead. The reality though is a little different. Every so often, a small amount of expected capacity will be left over that isn't quite enough to fit a whole new PBI into. And that's okay. Instead of trying to squeeze a small enough PBI of lower business value in, I generally recommend that teams simply acknowledge that they intend to start on the next highest business value PBI without the expectation that it will be completed in the same sprint. As the British Army adage goes, proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. So a thorough and well-conducted sprint planning session is important to help generate a forecast that is as accurate as possible. The sprint won't always go according to plan and no doubt adjustments will need to be made at times. However, if this session is well run, everyone will have a much better idea of what the collective objectives are and this information will make the coordination and alignment of expectations a great deal easier. And that's it for sprint planning execution. I'll see you in the next video for another Scrum Shortcut.